Good morning, good morning, good morning. Greetings, Christian Faith Fellowship Church. Those of you that may be visiting, watching online, God bless you. If you're on our Facebook stream, good to see you. If it's your first time, just go ahead and type us up in the chat and let us know it's your first time here. If you're watching on our church website, good to see you. It's great to see each and every one of you. I know I can't see you, but I feel you. And I'm excited to bring the word this morning on this beautiful third Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I want you right now to just lift your hands right there, right where you are. Just lift your hands and just begin to worship God. Just begin to usher in his presence. Just begin to tell God thank you. Just begin to speak well of the Lord. That's what it means to worship him. Tell him he's awesome. Tell him he's mighty. Tell him he's wonderful. Tell him he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Come on, let's make God's name great. Come on, let's just lift up a sound of worship. God, we worship you. God, we bless your name. God, you're worthy. You're awesome. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Set the atmosphere in your home. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of God. I'm so excited to bring the word. I have had one of the most supernatural weeks of my life, and I believe that God really wants us to hear what it is that he is saying in this hour. So let me pray and let us move forward. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. God, we thank you for your presence. God, we thank you for your presence. God, we thank you for your presence that is with us everywhere we go. God, have your way in this place. Have your way on our streams. Have your way on YouTube, on Facebook, and on our website. God, have your way like never before. God, visit them in their homes like never before. Visit them in their vehicles like never before. Visit them in their closets like never before. Visit them in their kitchens like never never before. God, have your way today, Jesus. Move by your spirit. Let this word be piercing but be purifying at the same time. God, we want to see your glory fall. No, God, I pray that you would use me in a way that you've never used me before. God, do what only you can do. Have your way. We welcome you in this place. I welcome you into my heart. I welcome you into my life, God. Speak through me. Use me as your vessel. I am just the puppet, God. You are the master. And have your way with me today, this morning. Let me minister this word the way you gave it to me, God. Let me declare this word the way you gave it to me. Let me preach and declare and prophesy the way you have given it to me, the way I feel it in my soul. I decrease so that you can increase. Have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know that? The world wants us to believe that even in this hour, God is not going to do everything that he said he's going to do. But I believe the song says that God is able to do everything he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. He is faithful to see his word to the day that it comes to pass. God is not a man that he should lie. We just believe that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. If you believe that, just lift your hands right now and just receive it. Just lift your hands right now and just say, God, I know you're a man of your word. (laughs) Hallelujah. You are a man of your word. You will do what you said you're going to do. He's never done me wrong yet. So I believe that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles with me to Malachi chapter 3. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Version. Malachi chapter 3, we're going to read uh, several verses of Scripture. I'm going to take a sip of water here while you're turning your pages or while you're waiting for your phone to load up. And let us get into the Word. Let us get into the Word. Malachi chapter 3. Verse 1 says, Behold, I am going to send my messenger, and he will prepare and clear the way before me. And the Lord, the Messiah, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple. 
the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like a launderer's soap, which removes impurities and uncleanliness. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, the priest, and refine them like gold and silver, so that they may present to the Lord grain offerings in righteousness." Then the Lord of Judah and Jerusalem will be uh, the Lord of Ju Judah and Jerusalem will be pleased uh, will be pleasing to the Lord in the days of old and as in ancient years. Then I will come near you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who oppress the laborer in his wages and the widows and the fatherlessness, and against those who turn away the alien from his rights, and those who do not fear me with an all-field reverence, says the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord. I do not change, but remain faithful to my covenant with you. That that is why, O sons of Jacob, you have not come to an end, or as the King James Version says, you have not been consumed. The topic of today's teaching is entitled, The Fire of God. The Fire of God of God. How many of you know that we need the fire of God? And if you want to have a subtitle, we're going to talk about the refiner's fire. The refiner's fire. The word fire here in the Old uh, Testament normally translates to the Hebrew word esh. And in the Greek, the word pure which is the root word in such English terms as pyromaniac and pure. The term refiner here is to bring to a fine or pure state, free from impurities, to purify what is coarse, vulgar, or debasing, to make elegant or cultured, and finally, to become pure. Both of these terms our physical manifestation of the word fire is burning, heat, light, and flame. And throughout the Old and the New Testament, you can see here fire functions as a significant theological symbol. It is frequently associated with these several concepts. Number one, the concept of God's presence. Number two, God's divine judgment. And number three, for purification. In fact, in the Old Testament, fire served as the primary means by which God manifested his presence and exercised his judgment. Back then, see, they had a sacrificial system, which was very important because, because it meant that once you brought your sacrifice to the altar, it would lift up an aroma. The fire, the burning, would lift up an aroma to heaven that would be pleasing to God. You can find those references in Genesis chapter 1 and Exodus chapter 29. But the first time God appears to a human in scripture, he assumed the form as a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch. You can find that in Genesis 15 verse 17. God also visited Moses when Moses went up on the mount as a fiery bush when he first revealed his covenant his covenant name to him in Exodus chapter 3. He spoke from the midst of a fire on top of Mount Sinai when he gave the Ten Commandments to Israel in Exodus chapter 19. So we can already see here there are several verses, several scripture references that shows God as a fire. The Bible says that God also led Israel through the desert by means of a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And the beautiful thing that I saw in that is even though the children of Israel left out of the, 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 the state in which they were enslaved, God took them into the wilderness and he says, I'm still with you here. And he began to continue to lead them and guide them through signs, miracles, and wonders. 
And there's a prophetic word in that even right now. God is taking some of you out of the place of your Egypt. And God wants you to know he was with you in Egypt. When he says he's going to lead you to the promised land and you have to wander in the wilderness, God says, I'm with you in the wilderness. And once you get to the promised land, God wants you to know I'm with you in the promised land. God is with us everywhere we go. The second point in my topic today is that God often communicates the protective nature of his presence by means of fire as well. The prophet Elisha was surrounded by an angelic army of flaming horses and chariots when the king of Aram tried to attack him in 2 Kings. Zechariah foresaw a future of Jerusalem without the usual protective outer wall because God told the prophet, for I will be a wall of fire around her. The New Testament continues to portray God's presence in the form of fire, especially in the person of the Holy Spirit. The outpouring of the Spirit at Pentecost was signaled by the appearance of fire on each of the believers' heads in, chap in Acts chapter 2. In his first letter to the Thessalonians, Paul warns believers to not quench the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the word quench normally refers to extinguishing a fire. And since God so frequently indicated his presence by means of fire, fire became a metaphor for God emphasizing both his holiness and his justice. Back in those times, uh, the ancient people used to kindle fire or, or start a fire by taking dry pieces of wood and causing enough friction enough to start a fire. I came here to let you know that you're going to have to endure some friction in order to get the fire of God. You're going to have to be rubbed together in an uncomfortable manner, but as long as God's fire begins to light the flame in your heart, God wants you to know that you'll be all right. <laughs> fire, even in the ancient days, was also started by striking rocks hard together, causing sparks to form. So there's going to be some moments in your life where you're going to feel like you've been hit by a rock, but that's just God trying to start a fire in your soul. Fires were normally maintained in those days because it was hard to get it back going. And so what Abraham did, he used to carry a torch on his way. You'll see many times, even if you've watched some of the old Bible uh, movies on, on television, that they're always carrying a torch or a flame. Because that torch or flame would light the way in which they were going. Which can also be symbolic of God's word, which can also be symbolic of God himself. The Bible says that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God is trying to light the way in your life. You just have to take heed to his voice and to his signs. In addition to symbolizing God's presence among his people, fire serves as an instrument of God's divine judgment. The destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah is the first example of God's use of fire to destroy wickedness in Genesis 19. So, Pastor Cam, why do we need this fire that you speak of? Why do we need the fire of God? What is so powerful about us having the fire of God? Well, this refiner's fire is, is significant because what the refiner's fire does, it doesn't burn or consume us. It just burns away the impure things that are in our lives and leaves the good for purification. What happens when you refine gold or you refine silver? You heat it up in a manner in which the gold or the silver begins to melt and the impurities will go to one side and the pure silver or gold will go to the left. And that's what God is trying to do in the hearts of believers today. God is trying to remove, remove the impurities that are in our hearts. God is trying to remove the impurities that are in our lives. God is trying to remove our sinful nature, our sinful desires. Because one thing that I've learned being saved is I can't easily die to my flesh I need the fire it's not easy for me to do the things that I want to do as Paul said the good that I want to do is tough because of this flesh this is why we need the fire the refiner's fire is needed 
because the furnace of affliction in the family is, of God is always for refinement and never for destruction. The refiner's fire is necessary because although we're made in the image and likeness of God, we often value the ways of the culture more than we do the ways of the kingdom. The refiner's fire is necessary because it purifies our hearts and positions them in a posture of prayer and thanksgiving for God delivering us from our evil past and our wicked past. And some of you may say, Pastor Ken, well, I don't have a testimony of doing drugs and I don't have a testimony of going to the club and I don't have a testimony of promiscuity and I don't have a testimony of being a whoremonger and I don't have a testimony of being a drug dealer. I don't have a testimony of being alcoholic, but you have a testimony that God saved you from a burning hell we were born into iniquity and God said you are my children and I want you to look and act as such the refiner's fire helps us to realize that we've made the traditions of men more important than true encounters with the father We've been so caught up in our musicals and, and throwing our programs together and having our services and putting together great conferences with great men of God's names on it and great women of God's names on it. But it's not about the men and women of God. It's about the man who saved the man who saved the man. It's about the man who came before the Lord and said, God, I am nothing without you. It's about God sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and taking what was to become what is for us in the kingdom of God. That's what it's about. The refiner's fire helps us to realize that we've settled on being the village in the valley that has good old church, huh? That has good old church rather than a city that is set on a hill that can't be hidden. My brother and my sister, we need the fire of God. We need the fire of God. Come on, just lift that up in the comment section right now. We need the fire of God. Matthew 5, verse 6 says, Let us hunger and thirst for righteousness so we can be filled Fill us with your fire, oh God. One of the things that we as a people have to understand is that in order for us to change our, our, our outlook on life, in order for us to change our habits, we have to change our appetite. Those of us that have put on some quarantine pounds, amen, you allowed yourself to be subject to your evil desires. I ain't even talking about you. I'm talking about me. You allowed yourself to be caught up in those buy one, get one free deals at Woodman's. You allowed yourself to be caught up in those buy two packs of Twizzlers and get one free. You allowed yourself to give room for your flesh to lead your life. And one of the things that God was dealing with me this week as I was having a conversation with my wife is there is, there is not necessarily any secret to success besides what Bishop said, contentment. The secret to anyone's success is hard work, dedication, and discipline. And what we've tried to do, if we tried to cheat the system, even though the Bible says that faith without works is dead, we've tried to cheat the system and we've tried to buy 10 steps to a better you. You've tried to buy five steps to become a millionaire and you've tried to buy three steps to become a trillionaire, but you have not put in the time, work, and dedication and discipline to be who God has called you to be. This is why we need the fire of God. We have to change our appetite. When you change your appetite, if you keep going for a period of time, over time, you won't, you won't even desire some of the things that you used to. I'm, I'm almost ashamed to say it. I haven't had Chick-fil-A in almost three months. I love Chick-fil-A. 
But I understand that when I go to Chick-fil-A, even though I may get some chicken, I may also get something that is bad for me, like the cookies and cream milkshake. Amen? In order for us to see the results that we want to see, we have to change our appetite. And the Bible says, those that hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. I only want God in this season and in this hour. God, I want you like never before. I'm hungering and thirsting after more visitations, after more uh, 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 visitations of your glory, visitations of your power, visitations of your presence, not just in my home, but everywhere I go. When I see another believer, one thing that I should know for sure is that they've experienced the fire. The fire may not be big and blooming like you think it should be but I should be able to look into your eyes I should be able to see your heart and see that you've been touched by the fire and that's the problem with many saints today is we are walking around and we have no fire we have no power we're not walking in any authority and that's why many of my generation has left the church in droves because we've talked about the fire of God without showcasing the fire of God it's time out I heard God tell me earlier this week that this message is for, so, for some of you that have been satisfactory saints. You're okay with being a C-level saint. You're okay with just barely making it. You're okay with just, well, I'm blessed. And we have to move from being a satisfactory saint to being all that God has called and commissioned for us to be because the time for us playing church is over. This message is for you that have untapped potential. You, you are frustrated so much with the church that you're trying to reject God, but you know that rejecting God is not right. But you're so frustrated because only the only resemblance of church that you've seen is, pe is people that are dysfunctional in your life. And you equate that to living righteous, and that's not the case. This message is for you. God is knocking on the door of your heart because he wants to reveal himself to you. He wants to put his fire on the inside of you. He wants to refine you. He wants you to be pure as gold. Just lift your hands right there where you are. Say, God, change my appetite. God, I want to have an appetite for holiness. God, I want to have an appetite for righteousness. God, I want to have a hunger and a thirst for the things of the kingdom and not the things of the world. God, I hunger and thirst for more of you. Visit me. Come in my heart. Come in my life. Do with me what you will. I present my body as a living sacrifice. And as I present my body on that altar, on the place where things go to die, on the place where things go to be lifted up and sacrificed to you, God, I put my body there and the sweet aroma of my will, my way, my, my, my desires, my flesh is going to be lifted up to you so that you can use me the way that you will. God, I am building an altar for you in my heart so you can have it so it can be pure because you're looking for pure hearts. You're looking for clean hands. You're looking for pure vessels. You're looking for those who are searching for you. You said for those that hunger and thirst after me, they shall be filled. Field. So, God, we are hungering. God, we are thirsting for more of you. God, we want a true encounter. God, we want true experience. God, we want the fire of God. I'm reminded of when I was 16 and this church, Christian Faith Fellowship Church, under the leadership of Bishop E. James and Pastor Deborah Logan, allowed several youth to go on a missions trip to Mexico with my big brother, Pastor Donnell, and we would go down there and every service that we had, we weren't in Cabo, we weren't in Cancun we were in the slums of Mexico we were ministering to God's people 
as teenagers and what we would experience was the fire of God. Every time Pastor Donnell began to lay hands and begin to minister, he would say, fuego! He would say, fuego! And the fire of God would come in that place. And we saw people get out of wheelchairs. We saw limbs grow out of people. We saw people being healed of diseases. We saw people being healed of cancer. We saw people's lives being restored. We saw gang members come to the church ready to make something clap. But God says, I'm about to meet you on the road to Damascus and I'm about to change your life. I'm about to shift some things around in your life. I'm about to change your name, your character, and your reputation. God says, I'm about to mess you up. And that's what happens, my brothers and sisters, when we have the fire. When the fire of God is in our lives, when the fire of God burns brighter and brighter in your heart, people's lives are changed forever. Somebody's life is counting on your fire. Somebody's life is dependent on your fire. This is why we can't just be a satisfactory student. In the kingdom of God. It's, we, we can't be okay with just clocking our church time clock. And I went to church on Sunday. I tuned in. You tuned in, but do you have the fire? It's time to stand up and decree and declare what thus saith the Lord. With boldness. Some of you may, be, may even be saying, Pastor Cam, I ain't never seen you like this. I haven't either. But I'm hungry for the fire. I'm hungry for the fire. Proverbs 28 verse 1 says, the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Why can we continue to allow the world to be as bold as they want to be about everything that they care about? But we as believers can't be bold about our faith. We can't be bold about the things of God. We can't be bold about what's right. We can't be bold about what's wrong. Sin is sin even if you in sin. And hell is real. Hell is for real. Heaven is a place that we all want to go so we are going to decree and declare righteousness because we don't want to see you in a burning hell we don't want to see you consumed we just want you to experience the refiner's fire the time is now to proclaim holiness and righteousness but not with lip service not as an immature saint, not as an incompetent believer like the Pharisees and Sadducees, but as a mature believer, as a competent believer. Not just with what we say, oh, I've seen you pray in church and I've seen your Instagram lives and I've seen your Facebook lives. And you appear to have the presence of God. You appear to be holier than thou. And you speak with such auspicious words. And you use all kinds of kingdom uh, uh, conversation and, and dialect. But after you turn off that Facebook Live and after you take the prophet off of your name on your Facebook page, are you living what you preach? Is there any resemblance of fire in your life? After you log out, after you log off, after you take your clergy collar off of your Instagram and Facebook Live, are you living what you preach? We have to live with the fire. It's time out for gifts with no power. It's time out for services with no fire. It's time out for musicals but no desire for the fire. It's time out for programs without the fire. Hear me, people of God. We need the fire. So God, fill our hearts 
with the fire of God so that we can pray with fire. Fill our hearts with the fire of God so that we can worship with the fire. Fill our hearts with the fire of God so that we can minister with the fire. Fill our hearts with the fire of God so that we can prophesy with boldness with the fire. And fill our hearts for those of us that are leading ministries, for those of us that are leading churches, for those of us that are leading movements. Fill our hearts with the fire so that we can preach with the fire, so that we can declare with the fire, so that our lives will showcase the fire that is within us. Fill us with your fire. God has been knocking on the door of your heart. You've been having constant visions and supernatural dreams and things that you can't explain and you've been trying to look up on Google. Things have been happening to you. God has been confirming his word to you through several signs. God has been showing himself strong in your life. It may even be super strong this week. I don't know what it is, but this, this has been happening to me. So God told me to share with you because this is a prophetic decree for someone out there. God is knocking on the door of your heart and God is saying, let me in. God says, I want to spend quality time with you. Just as you would feel some type of way if your friends were ghosting you and not responding to your text messages, but you got on Snapchat and Facebook and Instagram and you saw them hanging out with people. You saw them spending time with other people that you did not know and they were having fun. They were having a blast. And God says, that's what you're doing to me. God says, I want to spend quality time with you. God has been knocking on the door of your heart. God has been tapping you on your shoulder. The Holy Spirit has been whispering sweet whispers to your ears and you have neglected neglected his voice because you thought it was your subconscious mind. But the Bible says that my ways are not his ways. My thoughts are not his thoughts. That's how you know what the voice of God is because your voice is not like God's voice. Your voice is inclined to the things of the flesh. His voice is inclined to the things of the kingdom. Your voice is inclined to the things that you want. His voice is inclined to the things of the kingdom. Your voice is inclined to doing what your flesh tells you to do. His voice is inclined to the things of the kingdom and God saying I'm trying to get you to wake up because I want to visit you because I want to communion with you because I want to have a deep intimate relationship with you so that we can move this thing forward so that many people will begin to spark the fires within their hearts they're set a fire down in your soul that you can't contain and you can't control you're going to begin to want more of God as soon as you get a glimpse as soon as you get a taste as soon as you get a feel of the fire you're going to say God I need more of you as soon as you get to experience that tingling sensation no that's not goosebumps baby that's the fire as soon as you begin to feel a freshing wind a refreshing wind a refreshing wind that's going to be taking over when there's no air conditioning on there's no breeze happening God is saying I'm trying to get your attention because I want you to experience the fire because I want to refine you because I want to show you the greater and deeper things of the kingdom because I want to reveal to you secrets that are unbeknownst to men God God is trying to raise up the true sons of God. He's trying to raise up true daughters of God. He's trying to raise up new generals in the faith. I've even been seeing this spiritually that so many of the people that we pro profess to be generals of this day have begun to die and they begin to leave this earth because God is trying to tell us that I'm trying to raise up new prophets. I'm trying to raise up new prophetic voices. I'm trying to raise up new generals in the civil rights movement, in the kingdom, in, in, in the government. God is trying to do a new thing. He says, now it shall spring forth. And I'm not just the God of the promised land, but I'm the God of the wilderness. God says, I'm making a way for you. God says, I'll make a river in the desert. I'm putting streams where it doesn't look like it seems that it could be. God is saying, I'm about to do a new thing in your life. I'm about to meet you. You're about to have a road to Damascus moment where God is about to shift some things in your life. You thought that you didn't like church, but really you were just hungry for the true experience and encounter of God. And God says, I'm about to meet you. I'm about to mess you up. I'm about to take the S off your name and put a P. I'm about to add some value to your life. I'm about to add some substance to your life. I'm about to change some things around. I'm about to change your perspective. I'm about to change your vision. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I even hear God say, I'm about to flip the switch. Some things in your life started looking ugly. God says, I'm about to flip the switch. Too many saints. Yes, I hear you, God. Too many saints have been listening to the opinions of man and placing their value over the word of God. God's about to change all of that. <laughs> I'm reminded of a song that says, whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. I even see this, that God is about to raise up some new, young, strong vessels who are on fire. And there's going to be a revival and they're going to come together. There's going to be a convergence of this new generation. They're going to be coming together like never before. There's going to be unity in the body like never before. And there's going to be a bunch of little fires everywhere. There's going to be a bunch of little fires every, and people are going to be like, what is going on over there? That's just a city that's set on a hill that cannot be hidden. That's just a group of people who are on fire for God. We've got to stop playing with the fire. You're taught as little kids, as children, don't play with fire. And this is the fire that you don't want to play with. God says you won't be consumed. Malachi chapter 6, I mean, Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, he says, For I am the Lord. I don't change, but remain faithful to my covenant with you. That is why, O oh sons of Jacob, you have not been consumed. Some of you may be experiencing torment in your life. Some of you may be experiencing things in your life that you never thought you would have to deal with in this stage of your life. You have a good job, but you still feel torment. You have a nice home, but you still feel torment. God is saying, I'm, I'm with you in the fire. Just like he was with those three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God was, Jesus was in the fire. And as soon as they left the fiery furnace, there was not a stench. There was not a smell. Nothing was missing. Nothing was broken from their lives. Because although they were in the fire, the fire was with them. I pray this word blesses you. I pray that you leave this live this morning understanding the power and the importance of the fire of God and that God wants to refine you. He wants to clean your hands. He wants to purify your hearts because we just want to burn for you, God. Bless you. I know you were encouraged and strengthened by that word that God gave me for you. So please continue to tune in. I know you'll be encouraged, you'll be strengthened. God will speak to you, give you direction for these trying times. And please remember to support us online. Your support is very important. Again, we appreciate you in advance for all that you do and all that you give and particularly your prayers. Again, this is Bishop E. James Logan thanking you for joining us in the YouTube worship experience. God bless you. <laughs>